The boys, the male, could not see the angels, nor could they see Jesus, because they were looking at the physical. They were looking for what is already visible at this dimension. The female, the intuition, sees before it becomes physical. She sees the spirit before it becomes matter. Do you know that? She sees the spirit before it becomes matter. <laughs> I was just remembering when David was born. I was going to share this story. The day before he was born, and he was due the 25th, he was born the 23rd. On the 22nd, I was in my kitchen. And a door opened that wasn't there. I mean, it just there was a door in the middle of the room that just opened. I saw this door appear, and I saw this door open, and I saw a fair-headed, middle-height young man walk through. And I knew it was the soul of my baby. And I knew he was anchoring in for the last time. And I looked at him, and I said, oh... You must have been a boy in your last lifetime because you're a girl this time. <laughs> and he just looked at me because in that day and time, we did not know the sex, remember? A long time ago, guys. He just looked at me, the door shut, and I knew, I knew it was time. He was born the next day. And I'll never forget the spirit that I saw enter. And it was as real as you guys are. But he wasn't quite here yet. And there he is. <laughs> and I will also add, the minute I looked at him, and they said as a boy, girl, did not matter. You just, is your child. You know, boy was perfect. I'm glad I had a boy. So, the female intuition sees before matter becomes physical. Now, there is one young man who recently told his mom, I really don't like talking to you. I said, why? <laughs> I won't tell you who it is. <laughs> he said, because you're always right. And I thought, in my mind, as a girl, as a female, as wanting to live in the intuitive world, boy, I would love to talk to someone who was always right. But in our world, we're not taught to do that. We're taught to do. I want to do. I don't want to know. I want to try myself. Don't tell me what to do. Don't give me ideas. I need to exhaust all of my energy in doing everything I think I need to do first. And John's saying amen to them. <laughs> I need to exhaust my energy before I seek guidance. I need to tire myself of myself before I ask for guidance. And in that energy, and that's what we're taught to do, but in that energy, everything we create is going to look like everything we've already created. Because we're using the same source, which is our own consciousness. You all with me? Intuition allows us to see before it becomes physical. It allows us to tap in and touch before it becomes. And then guidance comes with that. You need to turn this way. You need to turn that way. Think about this. You see? And then choices become more full-bodied, not based on the outer, but based on what's within. All right. They said... If you are not open to intuition outside yourself, you're really not open to intuition inside yourself either. If you constantly go, don't want to hear it, you're probably doing the very same thing inside when your guidance system is trying to turn on. Then they said, do you really think the little flower that blooms really feels separate from the plant? Do you really think it says, I'm all there is, guys? Woo, look at me, look at me. And that it is separate? Or does it feel like it's an expression of all the life force within the ground and within the stems and within the leaves? It's an expression, a fulfillment of what that plant is to give to the earth. And are we not expressions of God? 
we're connected to this beautiful God energy, and as we as individuals express, we shouldn't feel separate. We should feel one with this beautiful force that's moving through us. So we become the flower or the tomato that we're supposed to become, but not separate. Do you see? And it's our divine intuition that sees us and keeps us in the connectedness. We have to own our intuition. We own the intuition of our own higher selves. We own the beautiful energy of Father, Mother, God, our guides and teachers. We have a host of spiritual beings with us, guiding us. It requires one simple thing. Ask. We ask. Ask. What should I do? What is my next step? How should I handle this? What do I need to do here? We ask. Instead of looking at the outer, what do I need to do here? Tell me what to do. If I ask all of you all to have an opinion of my next step in my life, I'd get that many opinions. Would they fulfill me? <coughs> no. And you're probably guessing at your best anyway. You don't know. Do you see? But we go within and we stay connected with the divine intelligence that is flowing through the core of my life so that I can become greater. Beautiful energy of divine love from our Father and Mother, from our higher selves. All right. Matter is a reflection of the divinity that we've allowed to express. The more of our divinity that we allow to express, the higher and more beautiful the world around us. A mother's love connects always with the divinity, always with the potential. The mother's love helps the matter begin to move and shift and change for the protection and the blessing of the child. Mother, earthly mother to child, parent, father, mother, God to us. Do you not want that connection?